Hey everybody, it's Infinite Drift and welcome back to the Survival Let's Play series. In the last episode, we set off to explore the new 1.18 update. We climbed mountaintops, we explored caves and found diamonds, until we finally stumbled upon a lush cave where we built a really cool little base down there. And now we're back home at our base. Despite all the awesome adventures, I did miss this place. So since we spent the last episode off on a huge adventure, I thought we would spend some time today fixing up our base a bit. And what I thought we would start today's episode off with is those cows right there. <laughs> I think it's finally time that we give them a proper home. So we're gonna find the perfect spot and build a really nice barn for them. So originally I wanted to build left of the chicken coop, however I really like this little hill that we have here and I thought we could use it for something else. So I searched around behind this ravine a little bit and came across this really nice patch of land right here. There's quite a few trees around here but if we just clear this area I think it's the perfect spot for a barn. And it's still really close to the chicken coop so at least they're in a similar area. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time clearing these trees and maybe terraforming some of the land around here. All right, the spot has been cleared out and I think that this is the perfect amount of space for a barn. Now I do have most of the materials that I need for this build. However, I am a little bit short on spruce and clay. I'm going to be needing the clay because we're going to be using a lot of bricks for the roof of this build. So let's quickly gather these two resources and we can start building. And don't forget to replant your trees. Unless, of course, you don't want them in that spot then don't replant them. All right, and the only other thing we need now is clay. I feel like I should probably put my diamond armor on, especially because the helmet has respiration. There, that's better. Alrighty, let's go get our clay. <laughs> Why is there a bee in my boat? <laughs> If I get in, will it stay there? <gasps> I have a friend now. I have a travel buddy. I love this. Hey, buddy. Oh, that is so funny. I love that. Okay, wait. You stay here. Don't go anywhere. I will be back in a second. I feel like since I have a new travel buddy, it's only right that we give him a name. So I'm going to go get a name tag really quickly. All right, name tag acquired. Now let's go name our new best friend. I think the perfect name would be Tony. All right, buddy, or should I call you Tony? Tony, my best friend. All right, Tony, where to? There are so many bees around here. It is just wild. <laughs> no wonder one ended up in the boat. So there seems to be a pretty good patch right here. So let's get this clay. So I do have a little bit of clay and brick at my base already. However, I just know I need a little bit more. So we're just gonna collect as much as we can here. And I think that should be good for the build. All right, so we've got about three stacks of clay and I think that should be good because I know we do have more at home. So let's head back. So we're just gonna let this smelt down for a bit. And while we wait for our bricks to be made, we'll set up our trusty station. So we have everything close by for our build. And you can't forget the stone cutter. So the bricks have been made and these are pretty much all of the resources that we are gonna be using for this build. And this is what the block palette looks like spread across like this. I just wanted to show you all quickly so you have an idea of the main Main primary blocks that we are going to be using for this build. So we're going to start things off by building the structure of the build which will be stripped spruce logs. The base of the structure is going to be 9 by 11 blocks so we'll start by placing one here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then for the length of it we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and one more back here. So in between these two columns I'm actually going to place one more right in the middle like so. So you'll have four blocks in between these posts right here. And we'll do the same for the other side like this. And next we're gonna bring the columns up to be four high. So just do this for every column. So after that, you should have your columns looking something like this. And of course, now we gotta strip them all. This is always my favorite part because the noise is so, so satisfying. So the sides of the barn are kind of gonna be like open concept almost. We're not gonna fill this in with any types of blocks whatsoever, but we are gonna fill in the front with stone and a little bit of brick at the top. So we'll start off with filling in the bottom half and then we'll get to the top where the roof is gonna be. So the bottom half is gonna be made all out of stone brick. I'm just gonna fill it in with the regular brick at first and then we'll interchange 
some moss in afterwards. And to round off the entrance of the barn, we're just gonna place two upside down stairs like this. And the gap in here is like a little bit too steep for me. So I'm just gonna put in a trap door here for now. And we're gonna lay a design across here anyway. So it'll kind of go in theme with the design that we have. And I'm just gonna pop out a couple of these stone bricks now, just to add some mossy stone so we can mix up the gradient a bit and just add a little bit more interest to the wall. And I think that is looking good so far. So we're gonna fill in the back here really quickly. And because we don't have a barn door at the back, it's just gonna be all brick all the way across. And like we did in the front, I'm just gonna pop out a couple of bricks here and there to add some mossy bricks to help give this a little bit more texture and life. And I think something like this should be good. So the first step to our barn is complete. And now we are gonna start on the roof to get the rest of our structure built. So we're just gonna place stairs on the fourth block of the pillar going out by one block. This roof design is gonna be a little bit different. So we're gonna do an upside down stair here. And then we're gonna go up by one spruce plank. And then we're gonna do another stair here, one upside down. And then we're actually gonna switch to slabs. So we're gonna place a slab here, connect a slab like this, jump up, place a slab here and keep connecting it like this all the way to the middle point of the barn, which should be right here. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing on this side, do a plank here, stair again, upside down stair. And then from here, you start building it up with slabs, just like so until it connects to the middle point right here. And for the rest of the roof, I'm just gonna connect it across like this for now. I might alternate the steps between upside down and right side upstairs, but we're just gonna connect it on this side only for now because the other side is gonna have a little bit of an awning. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the exact same design that we did on the front of the barn for the back. So the roof is attached all the way through on this side. Don't forget we're leaving this side empty because we're gonna have a bit of an awning. And this is the shape that we end up with for our roof design. So it's kind of steep on the sides here and then it kind of just softly curves up to the middle point. So now that the roof is done, that kind of gives us the shape which will allow us to fill in the rest of the wall. So for this half of the wall, we are gonna be using primarily brick and then we're gonna be mixing in some granite as well. So from here, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the brick and just pop out a couple pieces here and there and replace it with polished granite, maybe even some regular granite as well. I like the look of that. It's like a little bit more rough. And I think just a few here and there looks really good. I don't wanna go too heavy on alternating textures with this. I want it to be like 90% brick, if anything, just because I find that these complement brick very well, but if you use too many of them, they kind of overwhelm it because there's so many fighting textures going on at once. And we'll just get the back filled in as well, pop out some of the bricks, pop in some granite. And with that, the base of our walls are pretty much done. All right, now it is time for us to work on the roof. And we're just gonna fill it in pretty much by following the template we kind of gave ourselves when we built the structure of the roof initially. This build requires quite a bit of brick, so it can be kind of a pain to make, but honestly, I think it looks really good with the stone brick. So I would say that it is definitely worth it. And we're definitely gonna be adding the granite and polished granite. So this side is all filled in, but we will worry about texturing it afterwards because first I'm gonna build the awning for this side of the roof. I realized I was kind of wrong when I explained this side of the roof saying that we don't need to connect the bottom half. We need to get rid of this piece. And all we're gonna do is flip it to an upside down stair and connect it across this way because this will be the support pretty much for our awning. So we end up with something that looks like this for now. And in order to get the awning started, we're not gonna start on the roof and slope down. I'm just gonna mark out where the awning is actually gonna end and we're gonna build it going up from there and attaching to the roof. Including this block, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks and there'll be five in between. And because we want the awning to slope down a lot lower, we're only gonna make this two blocks high. You can also add one in the middle here, one towards the end, and don't forget to strip them. And starting on the upper part of this block, we're just gonna place a slab right here and we're just gonna slowly slope our way up using slabs, connecting them the same way we did on the roof earlier. Until you reach this point of the roof where you're gonna hit the plank right here, I'm gonna close it off with spruce stairs. And we'll just connect it all the way across like this. And we're gonna do the exact same thing 
on this side. I like the slabs because it gives it a really gentle slope upwards. And then I find the stair at the end just kind of connects it properly to the roof right here. And it makes it look pretty seamless. So you can kind of see that having this piece right here makes it kind of awkward looking. Um, if we get rid of it, we can always replace it maybe with a slab or something like that. But I even feel like this looks a little bit awkward. And then even if you have an upside down stair, that's not so bad. Except what I might do, honestly, is I might just replace it with an oak bush for now. But we'll kind of tinker with that a little bit later. So now we can finish filling in this side of the roof. So for this extra added awning, I'm actually going to fill in the middle with oak slabs. The reason I'm choosing oak instead of choosing to fill it in with brick is mainly because if we had brick extend all the way down, I feel like it would look really, really busy. So for here, this is where the oak slab is going to end and we're just going to top it off with the stairs right here. And then from then on out, it's all going to be brick at the top because it's all going to be connected to the original part of the barn. And this is what it's looking like so far in case anybody's wondering. Now we just have to fill in this half of the barn roof and we are good. So for pieces like these right here where you can end up putting a full plank here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a full plank and then fill in slabs like this just to give the inside of our roof a little bit more shape. So I just had to fix this side as well because I had this one as one full block instead of slabs. You can keep it as full bricks on the top. It doesn't really matter. It's just I kind of prefer the shape like this where it slowly curves upwards on the inside. It's pretty much just a preference thing. And now all we have left to do on the roof is just pop out some pieces and kind of add a little bit more texture to the roof. Just like the wall, I'm going to alternate between polished granite and regular granite. And I'm just going to go a little bit heavier on replacing the brick for the roof just because I find that with brick it has such a really distinct texture to it so when you have long strips of it it just kind of starts looking a little bit awkward in some ways so we're just going to pop out a couple more pieces and replace them than we normally would and as always just try to make it as random and organic as possible and if you go overboard you can always add pieces back I find that texturing can sometimes be the hardest part and yeah I think that texturing looks really good I like it and I built a little platform so we could see on this side and yeah that looks perfect I'm just gonna cover this up really quickly because I don't trust myself not to fall into that and maybe add just a little bit of a barrier right here I don't know why I didn't do that before so this is what the base of our structure looks like and I think it looks awesome I really love the palette that I chose for this mixing like the stone brick with the regular brick and the spruce I think they all kind of complement each other really nicely and I even love the oak roof that we kind of attach to the rest of the barn. I, I just think it looks really neat like that. So now that the structure is done, it is time for my favorite part, which is adding all of the details, which really makes this build come to life. So we're going to start by detailing the front of the barn. And we have a really good base to work with, but the initial problem that we have is it is still really, really flat looking and it's kind of lacking dimension and depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to start adding pieces that will kind of bring this barn to life and kind of add more detail to make it look more dimensional. So we're going to start by adding just a couple of stairs to the bottom here and here. And right here on the front of the barn, we have two very contrasting textures kind of fighting against each other in some way. I find that they work together, but the problem is you have to have something that kind of separates them so they become their own thing, like this being the bottom half of the barn and this being more attached to the roof. So what I think we can do to kind of make these two opposing textures work together is we can add a division line of planks that will kind of draw a line between the two. So we're going to add spruce planks alternating between adding one on the bottom half of the brick and then the top half of the stone brick. So you have a little bit of a wave kind of running across like this. And in the middle, we're just going to pop this one out and I'm actually going to place a fence right here and we're going to drop a lantern right here just to add a little bit of light. So you could see that pretty much divided the top half of the barn with the bottom half and they kind of work together more rather than fighting against each other and wow I just realized I kind of got the dimensions wrong right here the stone brick stairs don't go on this half they go right here instead so you just have to take out this block and place them one up and then the spruce slab goes right here I was looking at it and I was like something's not right <laughs> 
because now basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some barn doors and I was like hmm if they're only going up two blocks that's not gonna be right at all so make sure if you are following you just make the quick change right here by making the stone brick a one block above that was a mistake but it's it's okay it was a fixable mistake all right so next we're pretty much gonna add some barn doors but first what I'm gonna do is I plan on having some barrels on this side so I'm gonna place one here and I'm gonna place a hay bale right here because we are gonna have a pile on this side and I'm mainly putting it there just kind of as a holder just to iterate that the trap door has to go on this side right here three high just because if we were to put it on this block obviously we wouldn't then be able to place stuff on the side right here and we're just gonna go one more block out same thing three high and we're gonna do the same thing on this side and just close them off like this and just like that you have two barn doors that are kind of just swung open and you can already see that this has added so much extra depth to this barn and it's really starting to come together now and it feels like it has a lot more like life and character to it so now we're basically just going to turn this into a pile of barrels just like that we'll do three on this side and then we'll do the same thing with the hay we'll just have three in a corner like this so you've got your hay and your barrels kind of framing the barn doors on either side and I think that looks really good. And to complete the front entrance, we definitely got to add some leaves. Leaves are essential for pretty much every build that I do. I just love the way that they look, especially if you have BSL, they kind of sway as well. So we're just going to place them running down this way, down the barrels, and I always like to pop them into the ground as well. It really makes the area look a lot more overgrown. And this side, you know what, I might end up leaving this here. I kind of like it but I'll just kind of attach it maybe going like this for now and then we'll have it of course kind of attach into the ground and adding another lantern here for some extra light doesn't hurt as well and that's pretty much what we have for the front design of the barn and I think it looks really good so now we're just going to do a basic path going into the barn I'm just going to start even curving it kind of this way towards our path which is over there and it'll all connect perfectly and I kind of want to keep this path honestly as simple as possible and with that all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of coarse dirt on the outside here and there especially right here just because with the swinging barn doors you can't turn that into dirt paths so coarse dirt will definitely work for that so a couple of pieces of coarse dirt here and there and I think that is perfect so we're gonna do pretty much the same thing for the inside of this barn we'll even leave a couple of patches of grass here and there as well and since we're on the inside of the structure I think we could also add in maybe even like a little bit of cobble and a couple of even wooden planks here and there and you can kind of even extend the path out a little bit this way if you want just make it look very rough and rugged and kind of as messy as can be and for this section of the barn I think that should do the trick so we'll get to decorating the interior of the barn in a second because first I want to focus on this area behind me and build a little bit of an outdoor fenced area for the cows so I'm just gonna go by blocks of three alternating between fence and spruce fence gate and then closing it off with a piece of spruce log that will strip and then we'll place a slab on top so the cows can't get out I think right here what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to bend off the structure a little bit just to kind of create a little bit more of an interesting shape so it's not just like one giant square that's jutting out from the barn so then I think we'll start on this side right here and kind of make our way towards kind of connecting these and then I think for here because this is gonna be a little bit of an awkward shape we'll just go like this with a bunch of gates in the middle and then we'll close it off like this and we've got ourselves a little open area for the cows to roam in and I think this is looking really good so now on this side we're gonna place spruce fences and gates kind of alternating between the other like this so it creates a nice pattern and this side since it's four blocks instead of five you can just put two gates in the middle with fences on either side just like that just to keep it consistent looking and then go back to alternating on this side there and now you have yourself a nice little fence pattern around the edges here all right so now that we've got the perimeter of the barn figured out we can move on to decorating the inside of the barn so a lot of barns have a little bit of like a rafters area so I was thinking on this side of the barn we could build a little bit of a platform like that where we could have a little bit more storage with barrels and hay and all of that stuff so we'll just grab some spruce slabs and we'll place them along here and those slabs just kind of round off the edges right here instead of having that steep fall off and then we're gonna go two blocks out from here just right before this upside down stair 
and we're gonna go all the way across like this except we're gonna leave a spot in the middle here because we're gonna end up placing a ladder there and then we can go ahead and place a ladder that goes up which will allow us to get up here and we've got ourselves a cute little spot to add extra storage so I was thinking something similar to the pile of barrels we had outside we can just place them in the corner like this and maybe put some leaves on top and we definitely need a little bit of light up here so we'll add a lantern on top and in this corner we will put some more hay bales like this have them kind of randomize in how you're placing them and a lantern on top right here and it's a pretty small space so I think that should be good for everything up here all right and to kind of make this look like it has a little bit more structural support we're just gonna add a slab here and a slab here with two fences going down which will meet into a cobblestone wall just so it's not floating there you need a little bit more structural support here otherwise it doesn't really make sense in a way and I think it also kind of frames this area nicely as well all right so now that we're done with that side we're gonna move on to this side which is basically gonna be storage shelves so to start off on this part of the barn this piece of roof can actually be filled back in so we're just gonna fill it in with our granite and our brick just because the shelving is actually gonna go underneath it I'm actually just gonna fill this in with dirt really quickly just so I can correctly place my trap doors and we're just gonna line the bottom like this with trap doors which will pretty much be our shelving and I'm gonna keep this side really simple just by placing some barrels that are facing outward and just kind of place them randomly along here and then I think a lantern here and a lantern here would look good and we just need a little bit more greenery in this area so I feel like it would look pretty cool if we place some leaves in here and have them kind of wrapping around the post just like this and it just adds a little bit of greenery and movement to the area and then I think I'm gonna go up here and build another shelving unit just above it right here and we're just gonna go all the way across just like so missed a spot there Shh, you didn't see that all right so for the storage on this shelf I think I am gonna place the barrels in random directions just to kind of make it a little bit more different than the shelving we have down here so maybe I'll place one this way and then one back front facing get rid of that and then we could place leaves to the right of this one add in some light here maybe some more leaves right here and a lantern and basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use the same items as below here but making sure they're placed a little bit differently so there's not too much pattern and repetition all right so this is what we ended up with and I think it looks great now I think we need some more lighting added to this barn and I'm surrounded by lanterns right now but honestly I think it would look really cool to have some hanging lanterns from the middle of the barn as well so we're gonna skip these two blocks go into the third one and place one two three chains right here and then just add your lantern skip this block so we have even spacing and attach three more chains right here and then put a lantern on it so now in the middle we have three hanging lanterns and they're on different levels and I think that looks really nice all right so now for the final part of the barn interior we just have to fill the wall behind me and I really do want to keep it really simple with this build so we're gonna stick to the hay bales the barrels and I'm gonna add in a couple of composters so maybe for these hay bales we'll just add a composter in front of it we can also have some leaves running down like this and maybe even sneak in a little bit of a chest underneath and I think maybe a composter here with some barrels. Maybe throw a chest on top. We can throw in a barrel up here. Maybe a chest on top and a lantern down there. And we've got ourselves a nice little corner right here. And I think all it really needs, honestly, is a lantern here and maybe pop one on top of this hay barrel. And I think that is looking good. I don't wanna go too overboard with too many items. I think sticking in theme with just like the hay bales, the barrels and pushing it to the compost bin and the chests is good enough especially because for this build we have so many textures working together already on the base structure I don't want to go too overboard I just want to find a couple of items that complement each other well and fit in theme with a barn build and I think these all work really well together all right and we are nearing the end of this build and I'm so happy with how it's turning out so for this area we're gonna keep it pretty simple I'm just gonna add some dirt path around here kind of make it look a little bit more rough same thing that we did with the interior of the build and to rough it up a bit more we're just gonna add in some patches of coarse dirt and maybe even some leaves and honestly don't forget the edges as well because they are kind of part of the build so it's nice to kind of have a bit of your texturing go along the fencing as well so let's fill in with coarse dirt some leaves here and there not too many though honestly and we'll just do this area quickly as well same thing fill it in with your leaves and then fill the rest in with your coarse dirt 
And on this side, honestly, just because I really don't want any chances for cows to escape, honestly, even here, I might just patch this up with some leaves around here. I have made spaces for cows and given them opportunities to escape by accident before, and I just don't want to deal with that again. It is not fun, trust me. And for this little enclosed area, honestly, we're going to keep it really simple. We're just going to build a little bit of like a watering trough for them. So we're just going to put spruce fences like this, one on this side, kind of awkward to do, but then we're going to close it off like this, close it off on this side. And with that, you should be able to put water in there just like that. So we'll just fill the other side like this. We'll build out another one here the exact same way and we'll fill it up with water like this. And other than that, I think honestly, the only thing this area is missing is maybe like a little bit of greenery. So we'll put in a couple patches like this, maybe one right here. And we can add a couple lanterns in just to give ourselves a little bit more light in this area. And I would say that this area is pretty well good. I like it. And last but not least, there's one more thing I wanna add to this area. It's a big open area, but I don't want to add too many piles of things where they could potentially escape. So I figured we could add a little bit of like an azalea tree in the corner right here, maybe. So let's bring some dirt back, plant it right here. Let's bone meal it. And yeah, I think that's perfect. We've got a nice little shaded spot for the cows to hang out in this area. And most importantly, there's nowhere for them to escape. And with the final touch of that azalea tree, I think that this barn is complete. And I'm honestly so happy with the way that it turned out. It honestly looks so cute. All right, so let's run through it really quickly. So I am gonna have to put in some fencing when I get the cows in because obviously you can't really close these barn doors. They're a little bit more cosmetic than they are functional, but that's all right. I will make sure to fence it in before I bring the cows to their new home. So yeah, I'm really happy with the block palette that I chose for this build. I mean, a lot of traditional barns I guess are usually painted red so I like that I incorporated the red brick at the top but kept the bottom stone I think that it's like a really interesting combination to kind of mix stone brick uh, red brick and spruce together and honestly even the oak roof kind of works in theme with it as well I find that there's actually a lot of colors and textures in this build but they seem to be all kind of working together especially when you end up using items like the green leaves or the yellow hay bales those are primary colors colors that tie in with the red brick. So they all kind of end up actually working well together instead of fighting against each other because they're primary colors. So yeah, let's go back inside. And honestly, I really love the inside of this build. I love how on one side you have like a little rafter area where you can climb up. It's a little bit interactive. And then you just have like a little bit of storage up in here. And then on this side, we have our more traditional storage. We have a bunch of barrels kind of going every which way. It gave us more opportunity for lighting. I really do love adding leaves to this because I find that it adds like a lot more texture, but I think it also adds a lot more life to it. This barn feels like a little bit more overgrown like it's been here quite a while you can kind of see that in the mossy brick as well so I think that complements the leaves they kind of work together and yeah even like the chests and the compost bins those work really well in this area too I think if we went with other items I think it would just become a little bit more cluttered but those kind of end up working well with what we've got here and honestly I just love the look of chests I don't know why I, I love including them as much as I can in any build they're just like so iconic and so classic and and I just love like the orangey brown color of them as well. So after that, we've got this little awning area for our cows to hang out. They've got a really good water supply here. And with this, we just added a little bit of lighting and extra greenery. I don't really think it needed much else. Just kept it nice and simple because I think the main draw to this build is definitely the interior barn right here. And finally off to the left right here, we have this large open area for them to roam and hang out. And I'm really happy I put the azalea tree in the corner right here it was looking a little bit flat like it kind of needed something but I didn't want to overload it with too many items especially because they might be able to hop up on them and escape so I think a tree works really well and also it provides a little bit of shade for the cows so yeah I'm really really happy with this build and how it turned out I tried something a little bit different and something that I don't normally do with a new block palette and honestly I'm really really proud of it so with all of that I think it's time for me to fence this area off quickly and let's bring the cow to their new home. Honestly, all I'm gonna do is pretty much just add a little gate right here and I think we should be good. All right, let's go get our friends and see if they like their new home. Hello, my friends, I have gifts for you and I have even better news. You are free from this really sad pen. Come with me, all of you.
you at once. I'm gonna lose a bunch of you, aren't I? Some of you seem disinterested. Maybe you want to stay there, but doesn't this place look nice? Come on, come on. Through here, through here. Yes, yes. Oh, this is such a nightmare. Come on. I should probably just like break this maybe? I don't know. I should have just done it with like a dirt block instead. <laughs> This was a mistake. Oh no, are you escaping? No, no, how, how? No, get back, get back. It's the lantern, it's the lantern. Forget the light, forget the aesthetic, it's not worth it. Oh no, this one's like spinning around on it. All right, I think I'm just gonna have to like observe them for a bit to see if they escape. But honestly, after the whole lamp debacle, I think we're pretty good. I think the best test to do is to like, kind of like lure them with the wheat and see if they try to escape. They're all following it, but it doesn't seem like they can actively get out. What about this side? This side's a little bit more sketchy because they're kind of climbing up on the water trough, but I think it's pretty much okay. They can't really get out. I mean, you can see they're trying, but they're definitely not successful. So I think that is okay. All right, yeah, it was just the lamp pretty much that did it. All right, so the cows seem super happy in their new home, which I think is a massive success. I mean, look at that. Look how happy you are. <laughs> The cows in this game literally have the most apathetic expression and I love it. All right, everybody, now that we completed the barn, I think that is gonna be it for today's episode. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought of the build and if you enjoyed it. And as always, let me know what you think we should work on in the next episode. We have so many things to work on in this space, so many things to explore. The options are honestly endless. We could start villager trading. We could work more on the area inside the storage unit. We could do more decorating around the base. And honestly, we could even do some more exploring. So let me know what you all want and honestly I might even set up a poll on my community tab so keep a lookout for that as well. And with all of that I will see you all in the next episode. Bye!